Shoot. I thought we hadn't gotten to that portion yet. <laughs> no. Watch <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 550 Challenge uh, solution this time. So we have, as you've already heard, we have a couple guests with us today. Uh, so we have quite a, bit, quite a few guildies who've turned out, so thank you all for coming. Uh, we're going to go over the, the material uh, first, and then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, we'll take some questions. Uh, for those of you in the Hangout, feel free to start typing in the group chat, uh, and we can turn the mic over to you as well. So first off, we're going to go ahead and have Kay, as always. She's going to talk to you about some other things. Go, Kay. Well, I'm not exactly sure there are other things. I, I'm going more that it's totally relevant. Okay, so anyway, the 550 challenge is something that we did for 3D Game Lab. And 3D Game Lab is basically a teacher camp and a platform that, that allows you to do quest-based learning. And what we did was we set up math and stats in World of Warcraft. And, and the reason we really did this um, for, for a bunch of teachers was to get them to start thinking about um, how World of Warcraft could be used um, for, uh, for mathematics and statistics class. And we did link that back to the Common Core. We won't go into any of that t this time, but one of the wor word problems we gave them was this one. It was the 550 challenge. And the thing about, th and the, thing about the 550 challenge is that um, we, uh, what we had them do was select a character from Inevitable Betrayal and based on their current item level that they found from the Inevitable Betrayal, betrayal character in the WoW community. And so, and so then what we had them do was devise a strategy on what to do that they needed to do to get their 550 gear level. All right, thank you, Kate. Yes, and, and that's one of the things we've been looking at is that really how do you go ha go ahead and and optimize? And this is for uh, one of our one of our sessions that we are doing. And uh, what we've decided is we've gotten some really good feedback from our uh, very own Gilly. So we're going ahead and just just isolating this down to try to make it very quick and easy to look at what we're what we were trying to look at. And so um, when I looked at this challenge, I was like, okay, so how would I do it? Uh, initially for myself and and really what I looked at is the caveat here is really the focus here is just trying to get here as, as quickly as possible to 550. Um, so one of the things that you're, you're going to see is that we have um, primarily going ahead and looking at the average item level so what we're looking at is that uh, on the average item level if you look at your character and you open up the character sheet and you go ahead and you look at the character stat sheet, you will see that there's two numbers that are there. And uh, basically, the first number, it'll say item level, and it'll say, like, for this instance on, this, on the slide here, it says 508 of 515. And what that means, there's two different numbers. There is, the first one is the, the amount you actually have equipped. The other one is, is what you actually have in your bags. So those are some things that you're going ahead and you're going to look at is this is where these numbers come from. So the first thing we have here is that we have that um, you know the average item level. So let's talk about that. Really, what this is is that there is 16 slots that Blizz looks at uh, whenever they try to justify and determine what your item level is. Uh, the the caveat here is that a two-hand weapon, so a staff a two-handed mace, a two-handed sword, or two-handed axe, they count as a two slots instead of just one slot. Um, so that's the caveat there. And so this graphic is a nice way to look at and see, hey, this is really sort of uh, what we're looking at. Uh, they pull out each individual items. So basically that's what we're looking at, is we're looking at those specific slots on your character are really what Blizz looks at when it's coming up with the item level. So um, it's not doesn't worry about your shirt, uh, which is this slot here, or your tabard, that doesn't count towards anything else. But basically everything else you have here is what Blizz calculates whenever it looks at what you're equipped and what you're wearing. Now in your bags, it is whatever the highest item level is of whatever piece of gear you have that you can wear in your bags. And so that's how, um, you know, some of you may remember like in the Cataclysm time where where we try to do that whenever you're trying to get into dungeons uh, because of item level, maybe what it is is that you're cheating a bit by having a higher piece in your bag that you can't actually use, you can't actually wear, but because it's a higher item level, you kept it in your bag so that way you could get into the dungeon. Well, that's where the equip comes into, because basically Blizz uses that second number as the number it's looking at 
to see whether you can get into an instance or not. So that's some fun stuff. And in writing, because uh, in case you didn't like the graphic, uh, we also have the list of slots here. So helm, neck, shoulder, cloak, chest, wrist, gloves, waist, legs, feet, uh, the first ring, the second ring, the first trinket, the second trinket, the main hand, and an off hand. So those are the 16 slots that you're working with. So, so now you know that there's 16 different items that you have to go ahead and account for uh, when you're looking at it. So really what I did is I went ahead and I just went backwards by design. The goal, was, the end result was, hey, let's get a 550 average for all, for all 16 slots. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. You go ahead, take 550 times 16, you get 8,800. And then basically that's what you're looking for. You're like looking for a total uh, amount of items to uh, equal to 8,800. Uh, 8, so um, that's what you're looking at for here. And so then what you have to do is then you have to look at and say, okay, so here are different resources we have and here's different ways we can do this. So um, basically the gear that's available for you is 528 gear from Siege Ogremar looking for raid. You have 535 uh, pieces uh, whenever you do the Timeless Isle tokens plus a Burden of Eternity. Uh, you get four, five, forty pieces from the Siege of Ogremar Flex. So if you've been running in our in our guild Flex runs, uh, our Flex fun runs, I guess is how we think we sort of adopted calling them. Uh, you have a chance to get the four, five, forty gear. You also uh, can get five, fifty three gear from the Siege of Ogremar Normal. Uh, you can also get five, fifty three gear from Crafted Belts and Pants, and you can also get five, fifty three pieces, the tier pieces for hands and legs from doing the Celestials each week. So uh, that's over in the Timeless Isles in that court where whenever you go to pick up your, your weekly and your daily, your daily quest, you'll see there are some of the Celestials in the court there. Well, sometimes, sometimes you'll see people fighting those. And as long as they're a horde, you're able to go in there. Uh, doesn't, you don't actually have to be part of the raid. You can actually go in there and do that uh, and participate and get a chance to uh, get a roll of loot. Plus, if you have the Warforged Seals, you can get the bonus loot. So those are some things you can do to sort of help your increase your item level. Uh, the next thing you have is that each of these pieces can be upgraded twice. So the so basically by eight item levels total if you do the two upgrades, uh, which costs you valor points. So uh, the basically basically every four levels costs you 250 valor points. So every two upgrades will cost you 500 valor points. So the Siege of Ogremar LFR pieces can be upgraded to 536. The five, uh, 535 pieces can be upgraded to 543. The 540s to 548. The 553s to 561s. So those are different ways you can play around with it to really sort of give you uh, some flexibility in how you reach the 550 challenge. The constraints, of course, is that uh, you're limited to earning only 1,000 Valor points each week and uh, you are capped at 3,000. Uh, so uh, those are some things you just have to have to deal with. Those are constraints. Uh, the gear drops are all going to be random. You may not get the gear you want. Uh, but again, the, the, the way I'm looking at it is I'm just trying to get to the number. I'm not necessarily looking at optimizing it to a, to a specific uh, a build. I'm just looking at how do you get there as fast as possible. Uh, the Celestials, again, as I talked, uh, have a chance to drop the 553 tier gear. Uh, but you can only do that once a week. And then also what you have here is you can get additional bonus rolls by getting Warforged Seals. And these are a weekly quest uh, from Elder Lao. And you have to collect 50 Lesser Charms of Good Fortune. And, but you can only do uh, get three seals for every 50 you turn in. And again, you can only do that once a week. So actually, Kay has a question, so I'll turn it over. Well, I actually don't have a question for you. What I'm doing instead is I really want, wanted to say you can see the math that you have to do here and, and also stats and probability and, and how you get it and how you get a chance to, to really look at that. And the whole, the, the whole thing is that while you're doing this, while you're playing what people will say, oh, you're just playing a game, you're actually, actually constantly looking at these kind of numbers and thinking about how you're going to be going and optimizing these. Yeah, exactly. And that's really what this is. I mean, really looking at trying to get that 550 average, um, really what we're looking at is is trying to get there. Now one of the things we'll, we'll turn over a little bit later is Izzy will sort of talk about a strategy that, that he was looking at um, that he's added, he's added to this presentation that he can talk a little bit about 
Um, and, and he can talk a little about the reason why he decided to go ahead and, and make that adjustment. And the thing is, is that really what I, impress, what I want to impress on everyone right now is that, is that this is no, by no means the only way to get to that level. This is simply me looking at it and saying, here's, here's what I look at. I'm just trying to get to that, uh, that 8,800 level. And then once you get there, then you're at the 550 and you meet the 550 challenge. The other constraints are the crafters can make you a 553 belt and pants. However, it takes 21 days to make the to make the belt because of the daily cooldown with the mats to doing that, and it takes 28 days for the pants. Uh, so those are some things to think about that are there. And so those pieces are nice, but really what we're finding uh, for a lot of us is that um, making the belt is an excellent choice. Uh, the pants, though, the, the issue of the pants is that is that um, if you play long enough and you go after the, the the Celestials long enough, you usually can get that that 553 tier piece. Uh, obviously, there's some luck involved in getting them, uh, but but basically, you would want to do the 553 tier piece uh, more than you'd want to have the pants. So the pants could be uh, something you, you either um, would end up having a disenchant or sell off or whatever. But again, that depends on on what your what your focus is and, and, and how you feel about that. What I've done is I've made the pants, but the thing is, is once I get the tier pants. Uh, what I will do is I will go ahead and um, switch those over to my DPS spec and use them there. So that's something else you can do if you have an off spec. So the other item that's uh, other issue here is the legendary cloak, and this is really probably the biggest cheat in the game. Uh, is that if you can get the cloak, uh, but it comes at a cost. So and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, uh, later. And we'll talk. Actually, we have two people on who have uh, actually got the cloak, so they can talk a little bit about the the, the time it took them to get that. Um, pretty much what you have here is it gives you a 600 100 level um, piece. Uh, you can up to, upgrade it to 608. Uh, and it can be earned, uh, but again, it takes a time. And, and really, the requirement has, in addition to doing a series a chain of quests, uh, which we'll ta actually do a presentation on uh, probably the next couple of days, uh, it also requires you to be exalted with the Black Prince. So actually, uh, if I can go ahead and turn it over to Izzy, if Izzy could talk a little bit about how... Um, some of the time that went into getting to his cloak and sort of just giving people a feel for uh, what some of some of his uh, highlights are uh, when it comes to uh, getting that cloak and and then of course you know uh, Jacory if you feel like uh, hopping in then uh, just type in the guild the group chat there so go ahead Izzy okay thank you um, so the legendary cloak well my f based on my experience my first advice for you if you're thinking about getting that is stay with and be uh, di uh, diligent about doing your Black Prince quest lines uh, because number one you have to get the rep you have to be exalted with him uh, and he does have several quests uh, quests that requires you to gain rep uh, going to revere and then exalt later um, but whether or not you get the cloak is dependent on whether or not you complete the all five chapters of the Black Prince uh, quest line so uh, you definitely want to work on that and, and stay up to date. Uh, I, for example, uh, got a little bit tired of rep grinding, so I kind of stopped on my ladder tunes, and now I'm regretting it because I have to go back to old content and uh, basically farm LFRs for uh, some of the uh, the sigils of powers and wisdoms that is required for one quest, and then the uh, secrets. Uh, for another quest in that line, and then now the last uh, collecting quest, uh, the Titan Rune Stones. So um, if you keep up with it as you progress through the game, as you're leveling up and hitting, uh, you know, getting to Pandaria, hitting level 90s, then it won't feel like it takes so much out of you. Um, but if you slack off or, or leave it for a while and then go back to it later, then it's going to feel like. Um, you know, it's a lot more work than it actually is. So it's one of those where, and this is where Jacory will be a great source because she's been very diligent about that. And you know, you can take it the slow and steady, uh, but make progress all the time approach, so it doesn't feel so bad. But if you're trying to get it at the crunch at the end, then it gets to be a little bit laborious. So uh, that's what I, I would suggest about the Legendary Cloak: is keep up with the Black Prince quests uh, and get them out of the way as soon as you can uh, get access to them uh, because they do have many parts, many components and and the one that takes the most time is again collecting all of those uh, sigils mm -hmm. or secrets or rune stones uh, because you can only they drop in LFRs 
the uh, see Joe Gamora Alifar, the first two for Secret, and then uh, well, actually, some we're of the latter gonna, ones. We're actually going to do a, a, a full presentation on that. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just talking uh, about it. So, uh, Jacory, do you have any anything else to quickly add about the cloak? Because because uh, I don't want to give everything away because we're actually going to be doing that uh, a separate presentation on on, on that fully. Oh, I do have one other thing to add about the cloak. Sure. Is that obtaining the cloak will help you to reach that 550 challenge quicker because it actually opens up a uh, another aspect of the game that can get you some 559 gear. And we'll leave that until you do the presentation on the cloak. That's a mystery <laughs> item. Yeah, Jacory actually said in Guild Chat, she's like, uh, it's a lot of grinding. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. Uh, it, it does take some time, as, as Izzy has already started talking about, is that it is something that um, seems to be better to do uh, uh, if you were keeping up with the quest during the previous patches, but we'll talk a little bit about it, um, how we can go ahead and go forward with it. So... Um, We'll go ahead and we'll move on to the next slide. And the next slide really sort of, what this shows you is a list of all of the uh, scenarios I was sort, of, sort of thinking of. So uh, really there's two different ways you can do it. Uh, you can either do it with the cloak or without the cloak. And so the first one there on the left is the non-legendary cloak. And you can see what it requires. It requires you to do a lot of flex running. So if you want to go ahead and, be, and achieve the 550 challenge, obviously you'd have to have a lot of 540 pieces you get from Flex, and you would have to get the, uh, you do the two upgrades to those 540 pieces. So those are some things that um, you could do without the legendary quest. And you can see there's a lot of 540 pieces. Almost every item in your, in your, in your piece is, is basically having to be at uh, the 540 level or higher. Now, the one thing to think about, remember, is that the 540 pieces, it's just like LFR and a flex. The, the game automatically gives you a piece or decides whether you get a piece or gold. Uh, and so, again, the probability there, you're playing probability to try to get there. Uh, you see that we have the, there's three of the, the 561 pieces. Remember, those are either the crafted or the tier pieces from the Celestials, or they could be 10-player uh, normal uh, pieces as well that you've upgraded. So you'd have to have three of those. Uh, I put the hands, waist, and legs because they're basically the most, they're probably going to be the ones that are, you know, I hate to say, easiest to get, but they're the ones that you can sort of um, see a lot of, of people getting maybe prior to actually being in a lot of 10-player normals. But again, it's more about the number of items at a certain level that gets you to uh, the 8,800. The 8, so uh, you see with the non-legendary cloak, uh, I tried to get as close to the 880 as I, uh, the, sorry, the 8,800 as I could. Uh, I got two points over. Um, so uh, with that mix, that's there. And then with, with, with the cloak, it actually allows you to hit spot on uh, to uh, 8,800 here. And you see with the legendary cloak, because of the high level of the cloak, the 600 level cloak uh, compared to everything else, it makes it a lot easier for you to get to that, that higher level. Um, and the other thing about it is that Blizz does not round up. So uh, you see here it says uh, 550.125. The reason why I can't just get really close to it, a 549 or close, is, is that basically Blizz requires you to be, it does not necessarily round you up. Uh, I'm sure there's some rounding at some point as you get infinitely closer to uh, you know, the 550 from, four, from 549. There's some rounding there. Uh, but primarily, it doesn't seem to be a lot of rounding uh, in that in in the game at all. So um, that's something that that you can look at. And so what I was my consideration for my strategy was simply I'm just looking for a number. Uh, I'm not necessarily looking for a a, a mix a complementary piece. So uh, but someone who did do that is Izzy. So I'll let Izzy sort of talk about this slide. Oh well, um, this is just one strategy that. Uh, I, I like for myself because, again, it's one of those where you decide which gear you want, and I'm kind of a little bit into optimizing. So I worked out a strategy where I can actually go after the four-piece tier set because by having that, you actually get some bonus uh, capabilities that you wouldn't otherwise. Um, and really, it's not too far from the other strategy that Chris has presented. Um, the only thing there that I have to do... Um, 
which I'm still missing two P's really to get to 550 because I'm at 548.7 or something right now. Um, and it's the two <laughs> drinks. Not, not that you're counting or anything. <laughs> right. And but see, that's where the choice is in my bag. I can get to 550, but I want to keep my tier set because I do enjoy the, the bonuses that it provides me. Uh, and so really for my own personal set, the only two that I actually need to get to get to, to the 550 challenge is uh, the level 540 trinkets, which you can get from flex raids. Um, so uh, that's a, that table is a breakdown of my gear set other than the two trinkets. Um, because again, like I said, it is how I'm optimizing and I'm not willing to give up the tier set just to have, because if you notice the actual items, the tier set pieces I have are all from you know the LFR, Seizure of Ogumar, LFR 528, which are relatively easy to obtain. It's just a matter of you know getting lucky and having the Warforce seals and running the particular instances that uh, drop the, the tier piece that you want. So I find it to be a little easier than going after the like uh, farming for the the burden of eternity to get the uh, the token applied to the token from the Thomas Owl tokens. So uh, and you get to do that once a week. Plus with the war so, uh, war force seal, uh, it might make it a little easier since the drop rate for the burden of eternity is basically uh, dropped tremendously. It's very difficult to find those now. So so that's the the strategy I took for my set. No, that's cool, and, that, and that's that's the point. The point is, is that everyone's going to have a little different way of getting there. Um, like I said, I mean, really, when I, whatever I came up with, just more of just sort of a guide to sort of see where you're at and sort of sort of start getting a, a feel for uh, what what efforts going to be necessary to get there. So, uh, as I said before, without the cloak strategy, it does require a lot more pieces. Here's something um, really sort of a summary of those strategies: is without the cloak, uh, you have to have one four uh, five forty three piece. Uh, again, it doesn't matter whatever slot it's in, uh, but you'd have to have one 543. A reminder, the 543 piece is basically taking a Timeless Isle token that gives you a 496 piece and then combining a Burden of Eternity with that. Uh, how that works is you have to click on the Burden first, then click on the token, and it'll go ahead and give you a, a 543 piece. Again, that's all random, So, uh, but that's not really what I'm looking at. It doesn't really matter what enchant it is. Uh, in this model, because I'm not really looking at how you whether you're optimizing it for your um, your build or not. It's just looking at what the number is. Uh, so again, you'd have a four nine. You'd have the the five thirty five piece that you'd upgrade twice and to make a five forty three. Then you need to have twelve uh, five forty eight pieces, which is flex gear. Uh, now the caveat here, obviously, is if you are a class that allows you to use a two handed weapon. So if you use a bow, if you use a uh, two handed sword. If you use a um, staff, uh, those are all, or of course, a double-handed mace or a double-handed axe. Uh, those are all things that allow you to give you a little bit more cheat room or a little more flexibility here because then you really only need 11 pieces because, remember, Blizz counts those as two pieces. So uh, that's something that, that uh, hunters and uh, druids and some other, pe other uh, classes that use two-handed weapons have an advantage over those that have to have two one-handers. Uh, so those are some things to look at. Uh, there is how to get there. You also need to have three 561 pieces to make this build. So therefore, what you're looking at is that you're you're seeing that okay, well, you have to have the 553 pieces, whether they're crafted or tier, uh, from the Celestials, or if you're able to get into a, a 10 man normal uh, and and get a, and you're lucky enough to get a piece there. Uh, basically, uh, that will get you to your 561s once you upgrade. So uh, with the cloak, obviously the biggest caveat is you need to have the cloak. <laughs> you have to do the work to get the cloak. Uh, so you have to twice to get it to 608. Uh, you need to have one uh, 532 piece, which is basically just one upgrade of, a of an LFR piece. You then would have to have two or three 536 pieces. Again, if you were able to get a two-handed weapon, you'd only need two pieces uh, as opposed to three. Uh, so you'd need to have two of those uh, 536 pieces. You need to have three 540 pieces, uh, sorry, 543 pieces, which would be uh, three of those Thomas Isles plus Burden of Turnies. Uh, you would then have to hit five 540 pieces from the flex rates. Uh, so those are some things that, that you're looking at uh, for building. And of course, 
The foundation is that you also have three of those 561 pieces. So really that's sort of what you're playing around with is you're playing around with uh, a lot of different things to try to get you close uh, to, to that number. If you're uh, someone who's looking at valor points and seeing what's there, uh, really basically this is what you see here. Uh, if you have no cloak and you have you cannot use a two-hander uh, to, to give you that extra, uh, that one less slot needed, uh, basically it's going to cost you 8,000 valor points to upgrade the whole thing. Remember, you're, again, you're capped at 3,000 and you can only get 1,000 a week. Uh, if you have a two-hander and with no cloak, it's going to cost you uh, 7,500 valor points. Uh, if you have a cloak and you have no two-hander, it'll cost you uh, 7,750 valor points. If you have the cloak with a two-hander, it'll be the least expensive in terms of valor points, and that would be 7,250 valor points. So those are some things you're looking at as far as just different considerations and things you can look at running. We were already talking about the LFR. We're already talking about making sure you do the Celestials uh, once a week. Uh, and I know the guild, as a guild, we've been trying to make, do that uh, once a week, even during the holiday season here. Um, and then the other thing is you have to run enough stuff to get your Valor points to be able to afford the upgrades when you have them. So um, so those are three different areas that uh, you're obviously looking at how three different activities you can be engaging in to sort of move towards that level if you choose to. So my recommendation just basically looking at it is, is um, right now where we're at, um, I would say right now the, the safest bet uh, is the run for the legendary cloak. Um, it's more about time than it is about luck and flexible, and it's a lot more flexible um, as long as you have time. Uh, obviously, if you don't have time, then then it's it's it may not be the strategy for you. But the reason is is that the cloak is guaranteed. If you put in the time and you run the runs and you get all the pieces that you need to get, uh, you'll actually be able to get that cloak. It's a guaranteed. Uh, deliverable. Whereas a lot of the other ones is, is that you, it's it's the it's the luck of the random number generation, uh, the RNG in the game, and that sometimes you get pieces and sometimes you get gold. So uh, oh, and Jacory just also put in the chat that once you do get your cloak, uh, you actually access are able to go ahead and do the boss on Time Isle, which is uh, is which is Ordos, and Ordos drops 559 gear. Um, so that's another way to, to go ahead, another reason to go ahead after the cloak. Um, again, but it's all about, uh, uh, oh yeah, and Izzy added, uh, it's for all your tunes. So once one, one tune gets the legendary cloak, then all of your other ones uh, get access to doing Ordos. So, so that could be another strategy, get the cloak once, and then go ahead and have uh, your other tunes start running. Uh, you'll see the Ordos runs that are out there. So um, either way, uh, it's going to take you lots of time, which is something that we're, we're used to here in World of Warcraft. There's definitely a lot of grinding going on there. And it also requires patience and a lot of luck. Uh, so that's, just, you know, you have, to be, you have to make sure the RNG gods are in your favor and uh, to make sure that you, you go ahead and uh, hopefully get the pieces that you want. And again, you know, it's all... It's one of those weird things where sometimes you'll get into dungeons and you'll get a ton of stuff, and the next two weeks you run dungeons and you get nothing but gold. Uh, so gold is good, but it doesn't help us get to the 550. Uh, so unless you're buying the, uh, the the pieces off online on the auction house. So um, sort of wrapping it up now, we're going in under some examples. So here was Kwapi. Uh, so here's my character. Here's all the all the equipment that he has. Uh, currently he's at 543. Um, and basically, what I looked at when I started looking at Coopy, they went, oh, "Okay, I'm currently at uh, 543, which is which ended up totaling, sorry, sorry there. Uh, it currently, uh, currently, I was at 8,696 uh, uh, total item level. So if I if I added up all his item level for all his gear, that's the number I got." Uh, he needed to be at uh, 8,800, so I have uh, 104 points to go. So uh, basically the strategy I came up with him would be to get the legendary cloak, uh, would be to upgrade it, uh, run Celestials to get the uh, 553 gloves, because I already have the belt and I already have a crafted pant. Uh, the other thing is is that I'd be looking to run Thomas Isle for a neck token and uh, be able to go ahead and upgrade that once. Uh, then I would go ahead and look for, uh, hopefully get a 540 trinket, an, uh, another 540 trinket, and upgrade it twice. 
So Malakork, we're coming for you. Um, the other thing is, is that I need to uh, also get uh, an upgrade on a 535 ring I already have uh, and upgrade that twice. So just sort of a, a, a basically a little checklist I have for Coopi is is looking for the cloak, looking for the gloves, uh, looking for a, a Thomas Isle neck piece, and then looking for a trinket uh, from the Flex Rage to go ahead and use. Uh, basically, I have to do nine upgrades total uh, for 250 valor points each. So I'd be looking at 2250 valor points. And so that's a really quick. Uh, fast way uh, I went ahead and used it. So um, one of the things I wanted to to show you is is I've gone ahead and uh, posted this already in the community, uh, the Google the Guild community, and I'm going to go ahead and switch over my screen to uh, another piece here. And uh, what you see here on my screen is this is sort of a, a public template. So this is a open template. Uh, everybody has the ability to go ahead and uh, uh, make a copy for you yourself. So if you log in with your Google Plus account, with your Google account, you'll be able just to make a copy. Simply go to File and then Make Copy. And then that way it will show up on your drive, uh, and you can go ahead and use that. If you enter your values into this, this, this uh, spreadsheet, everybody who looks at the spreadsheet will be able to see your values. So that's why it's uh, really important to go ahead and make your own copy. Uh, that you can play with. But basically, uh, here's the template that I used. Uh, so I'll go ahead and flip over to the sample. Uh, the other, there's a little sample button down here at the bottom that will let you see uh, what I did for uh, Kawapi, actually. So here's a list of all the gear, uh, the slots. Here's what the legendary, I went with the legendary cloak strategy. Uh, the variance here is basically the difference between what I currently have equipped and the legendary cloak model. And then the reason why I added an offsets column here is so that way you can visually just say offset or you can put an X next to it because you'll see some of the numbers will be negative and some of the numbers will be positive. Uh, so basically it's just going ahead and some of them will cancel out because obviously if you have positives and negatives, you can cancel them out because that means you don't need to. You have certain pieces that are above uh, the model build uh, and some pieces will be below. So uh, basically what happens is if it's a negative number, it means that the piece that you have is lower than, the piece that's currently equipped is lower than the model. If you have a positive number, it means the piece that you have is higher than the model. And so you see an example here, um, this 16 was an offset, and I'm offsetting 12 of those points uh, with the ring. So that means I don't need to get a new ring because uh, the, 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 the shoes I have on um, are, are higher than the model is. And so then basically all I did is I went through and anywhere there was a zero in variance or a positive number, um, I carried over the value from the currently equipped and said yes, they are currently equipped. And anywhere where there was a negative uh, that wasn't offset, um, then I went ahead and I put that in yellow here and said no, it's not equipped. So it's a very quick uh, quick way to go through and use that model. So again, I, I did put notes down here at the bottom of the sample and I did put a reminder to let you remember, help you guys remember where all the pieces came from and where the numbers come from and what you're looking at there. So um, that's really sort of the, the templates out there and uh, you also have uh, this piece here where you can go ahead and see you can use this template to sort of enter what you already have and then you can see where that is. So that's something you can play with. That's something you can go ahead and, and have some fun with uh, as, as you want to, uh, or you don't need to do it if you don't want to. But again, that's really sort of all, all I, I did already this for you, so that way you don't have to um, uh, re try to redevelop the wheel if you don't want to. Uh, so I figured that might be a quick, easy way to, to start doing that. So now going back to slides, this is a, just another example um, uh, of another tune. So I picked Konoshiki. Uh, and basically said, here's all the equipment that she had at that time. Um, I know she's done some upgrades since then, uh, but basically at that time she needed. A, she was at uh, 86, uh, 24, and again needing to get that that 88, uh, that 8800. So uh, she was she was 176 points away from that number, and so basically the strategy for that again was to get the cloak, uh, run celestials to get the legs uh, and upgrade them twice, run LFR for some 528 shoulders. 
uh, run Timeless Isles to get a neck token and a Burden of Eternity. Uh, get a trinket, get a 540 trinket, get a 540 ring, uh, actually two 540 rings, and run Timeless Isles for risk tokens again to get another Burden of Eternity to push that up uh, higher. Uh, so uh, obviously with a lower number, there's a little bit more needs there. But again, that's one of the things that you'll have to decide what you want to do because, as Izzy pointed out, there are there are reasons to get uh, certain pieces. Um, the other thing you'll notice is I know I know for my uh, druid that uh, basically the, the the best in slot pieces that they have uh, aren't necessarily uh, the 528 or the higher level pieces. Sometimes uh, some of the 522 pieces, some of the 522 trinkets or gear set is actually sometimes uh, thought to be a better fit because of just the stats that are on it. So um, there's some different playing around with it you want to get to. Again, the strategy here was to get people to uh, the 550 uh, portion. So uh, with that, we'll see, uh, we'll check guild chat and we'll check uh, in the group chat. Uh, if anyone has any questions or if anybody would like to uh, uh, make some comments, uh, feel free to do that while, I, while we check the, uh, the guild chat. Sure, it looks like uh, Becca has a comment, so go ahead, Becca, and uh, talk to us. I have a screen share up of Ask Mr. Robot. I'm going the with the club method, and I'm also trying to think about what's best in slot. And um, the other day, I was playing around with the options because you can you can set in Mr. Robot the the you can customize what he can tell you is your best in slot. Like for gear level I put pre raid because anything raid level is not gonna be readily available to me. And then you can check off things that you want to exclude, like Thunder slash Warforged items. I have checked that out because because I don't want him including those in my best in slot because they're they're hard to get. And I don't have the cloak yet, so for the world boss items, there's a drop down thing, and, and I put it on four Celestials or lower. And when you click best in slot, it'll it'll calculate off the um, the options that you've picked. So I'm gonna do that um, right now. There, right here, you might notice a dotted line around the shield. That's that's not the best in slot item. For uh, my Be Becca, if you could uh, try to reshare your screen for for some reason, it doesn't seem to be uh, coming uh, over. Sure. Yeah, it finally made it just now for me. Uh, it is. Oh, it's there now. Uh, but it, then it disappeared again. <laughs> uh, let me just reshare it because it'd probably be easier. How about now? Still don't see it yet. Maybe if I re refresh this page or something. No, that's okay. I pulled it up on mine, and so I'm showing the options. So, uh, what do, what restrictions did you put on to it? So, for gear level, you had it for what tier? Pre raid. Pre raid, okay. And you did you allow flex or no? Not allow flex. I did. Yeah. Okay, and no heroic. No, I turned flex off. Okay. Because that's not readily available to me either. Oh, okay. And, and I then, changed um, World Boss to Four Celestials, and I excluded Thunder Warforged items. Okay. All right, I'll go ahead and do that. There we go. See, see where it says offhand there? Mm hmm I decided I wanted to keep the the barrier that I have now, the shield, mm -hmm. because that item there is not a shield. And my personal preference is to have the shield. 
Then you have, uh, which one is it, the 528 shield? Yeah. The one that says equipped right there? Mm-hmm. There you go. So, And that's the dotted line you were talking about earlier. Yeah. And if you go back and click my gear, mm -hmm. there's an arrow next to all the items that I don't have best in slot for. But you don't have the dotted line around yours like I do for my shield, so you di it didn't lock, I guess. Well, it does show that up for best in slot, but it doesn't carry over uh, in the My Gear area. Right, but on my page it does. Oh, okay. Because I've ex I've excluded that change. Is mm -hmm. my page showing it? Because on mine it doesn't have the arrow. No, it still doesn't show it. No, unfortunately it does not. Okay, well, next to my offhand it doesn't show the arrow anymore. It is next to my main hand, shoulder, wrist, and legs. Mm-hmm. And um, when you go back to the um, best in slot, it'll tell you what I need to get there. Mm -hmm. Like, for this particular build, because if I change the variables, the build will be different. Mm -hmm. For my main hand, it says horned mace of old ones. And for my shoulder, it says shoulder wraps of celestial harmony. Mm -hmm. For my wrist, it says Orden Legend Keeper Bracers of the Fever Flare. And for my legs, it's going to be that tear piece, mm -hmm. Leggings of Celestial Harmony. Now, if I, if I change the options once I get the cloak, like if you go back to options and you click Ordo, Ordo so lower, mm -hmm. these variables change. To include items that he drops off, and because you're now including items he drops off, some of the other items change as well mm -hmm. to balance out, I guess, the stats of the other items and such. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is, is you can definitely use Ask Mr. Robot for a lot of things. The other cool thing about Ask Mr. Robot is when you're looking at best in slot, you can also click show drop locations, and that'll tell you where you can get everything. Um, so that's another way to go ahead and utilize additional tools uh, to to grab, to find out where you need to get the pieces that you're looking for. Um, so definitely uh, encourage everyone to use Ask Mr. Robot as a starting point, and then once you have it set, you can start playing around with it a lot more, uh, because once you have a better grasp of what you're doing as far as your your build, you can start playing around with the weights and how the setup goes. So, um, yeah, definitely. So one of the things I wanted to do was we, we do have a special guest with us today who normally doesn't hop on with us for the Hangout, but uh, uh, he's been gracious enough to come with us and uh, for us to, to play Makeover with. Yay! Uh, so what we have is we have Isia here to do this today. So uh, Isia. Uh, has uh, allowed us or granted us maybe with, with, with or without his knowledge to uh, go ahead and start doing a, a gear makeover for him. So uh, one of the things we're going to look at is uh, seeing, uh, showing you just sort of a live example of how to go ahead and uh, fill out uh, this information. So I see it first off. Uh, how how are you doing with Valor Points? Oh, and you may be muted, so you might have to unmute. Oh, well, I guess his uh, sound isn't working. But uh, one of the things uh, we're looking at is... Okay, uh, you, now. Oh, there you go. I have a few Valor points. A few? <laughs> I mean, what's the cap? The cap is 3,000. Okay, it, it looks a lot like that number. 
Ah, it looks a lot like you know. I'm sure. I'm sure you're rounding up as well. So yeah. You're, you're, yes. Yes. <laughs> so one of the things you can do with your your valor points is uh, you know as you're looking at, at trying to increase your item level is you can upgrade each piece uh, twice. So you can actually use those. So even though you can't, uh, if you don't have, if you have, it looks like you have most of your pieces are over the 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 522 mark. So um, really, right now, the best use of your valor points would be uh, to upgrade your gear um, to give you sort of uh, more of uh, a bit more pieces to 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 play with to help uh, you know increase your your performance. So it looks like you have a lot of the 522 pieces, and so it's a good starting point. It looks like your character is currently at at 527 according to uh, the WoW community, and that's one of the nice things about the WoW community is that it does give you a, a chance to look and see. Um, where you're at, and, and you can pull items from. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just start typing some things in. So it looks like you have a 553 headpiece. Uh, so a 522 neck. And a... So um, the other thing is is that what we have is a 536 uh Piece and what I'm doing is actually while I'm looking at this, uh, everyone's seeing the actual um, WoW screen, but I also have up on another window I'm working on the spreadsheet, and unfortunately I can't share the same screen. Uh, I can't split my screens and share both of them at the same time. So what I'm doing is I'm filling out the spreadsheet, and then I'll show you that once I have that filled out. So we'll go ahead and move on from there. So we're on the wrist now. I'm going to move over to the hands. And the belt. Almost there. On the rings. Okay, and then on the main hand we have a bow, so congrats on getting your LFR bow. Yeah, and I think I've upgraded it using the Valor points, but that was a while back, I believe. Yep, that's what it looks like, because uh, it looks like you're at uh, 536 on that one. All right, so now we have the um, pieces in, so these are your uh, live pieces that are here. Uh, basically, the model is uh, with the legendary cloak. Uh, and so basically, what we have here is uh, we have a, a couple. We have a couple equals where we wanted them to be. We have a couple uh, one offset. It looks like we have one piece here uh, that's above it, so on the feet. Uh, so uh, basically, we would just be carrying it over. So we're looking at this one. So we would want to go ahead and and it's looking at you uh, upgrading your headpiece because you do have a, a five uh, thirty-five headpiece. So. Uh, if you upgraded that, that would meet the um, legendary cloak um, requirement. And then uh, the neck piece, it looks like it's wanting you to do a, again, if you're following the model, uh, it would just be looking at you uh, getting a um, another time of style piece and doing the neck. Uh, the shoulders would be a flex raid shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the legendary cloak would be um, the back piece. Uh, the chest piece, you actually have the chest piece. You would just need to upgrade it, and you would meet the chest piece um, part there. Um, for the for the wrist, the same thing with the wrist. If you upgraded your wrist, that would uh, get you to um, the model uh, level for the wrist. And then looks like the hands, it wants you to go for the 535 uh, hands uh, and the belt. So... We'll have to be talking to some crafters for you. Uh, and for the feet, looks like the feet, it's just a, a simple, um, you're actually above already, so you're in the plus for the feet, so your feet are good. Uh, for the rings, uh, you know, the one, the 502 ring, obviously would, you'd want to upgrade that um, as you're able to. And yeah, the ring, the rings and the trinkets are, are a bit low for the model, but that's, that's to be expected at this point. That's why we're striving to... Um, Improve it. Uh, your 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 weapon is totally fine. Um, you've already upgraded that. 
So really, uh, with that, that puts you at um, uh, over it, uh, 88. So a lot of these are very achievable for you. So anything with an 8 on the screen here, with, the, with the, the 8 there, would actually be something that's very easy for you to get because that would simply be a matter of upgrading those pieces um, twice to get those 8 points. And of course, you know, the ones that's already zero, you don't have to worry about because you, you already have them. Okay, I do have in my bag, I have a timeless mail belt, a timeless signet, and a timeless mail chest piece. So, mm -hmm. and I do have a burden of eternity. Yeah, actually, it looks, but basically for the model, the only one you'd want to use it on would be, you'd want to try to get a lavalier piece, the neck piece. And then, and then go ahead and use that burden on that neck piece. Um, because actually your chest is totally fine. Uh, if you just upgrade it twice, uh, your, your chest piece would, would fit the model. Uh, the same thing with your wrist. If you upgraded that twice, uh, that would go ahead and um, meet the model. And your headpiece would also be upgraded twice to meet the model. So head, chest, and wrist would need yep. to be upgraded twice. I have I have enough valor points to do that. Yes, yes, you do. Because <laughs> that would be fifteen hundred valor points to go ahead and do that, um, and so that would be that would get you really that would get you that'd push you up as well. Um, uh, a few a few item levels uh, probably your overall score since it would improve you by you know twenty four you know twenty four points total, and since you know if you get every for every sixteen points you increase yourself one item level, um, so you'd be pushing yourself up a little bit higher. And then, um, you know, basically that would be your, your strategy would be, if you wanted to follow this model, of course, um, would be to go look for the neck piece to upgrade. Um, you know, shoulders um, would be trying to see if we can find a, um, a flex raid. Uh, if, we can, if we can get your shoulder in the flex raids, obviously the cloak. Um, the hands, the, the legs would be running um, celestials, probably would be the, the more, most... Uh, probably the fastest way to get those would be running the Celestials over in the Timeless Isles um, to get you those uh, 553 tier pieces that they drop. Um, and that uh, the waste would be getting a crafter to build you, to make you that waste piece. Um, that would get you there pretty quick uh, for that one. And then uh, the rings are, are, and basically everything else is flex rates. So trying to get lucky during the flex rates um, is really sort of where you're at right now. Okay, but you're pretty close. You've got, yeah, like I said, you got one piece. You got basically you got the 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 feet and the weapons you already have. You already have the head, wrist, and chest. You just need to upgrade them, and you'll have those pieces. And so, um, you know, out of the sixteen pieces, you'll have you'll have six of those. And then um, you already have the burden to to go ahead and upgrade the neck piece. Um, so that would make that uh, you just need to get to run time aside to get the the neck pieces. And then pretty much what you're doing is you're just running Celestials uh, and we'll find you a crafter to help uh, make a belt for you. And uh, that will get you, uh, like I said, a, another piece. Um, and the rest is basically um, <laughs> running those electrodes. Okay. But, but so... All the coins that I have, I mean, I have enough timeless coins to buy a few burdens of eternity, but if you don't yeah. need them, what else can you use the coins on? What can we... Well, with the coins, the, the, the Emperor is... Um, sells a couple... There's a couple different vendors over there at the Time of Siles, and uh, there's trinkets that are sold, but again, you'd have to see what the trinkets uh, work for you or not. Um, and and again, the, the caveat with this is we're just talking numbers here. Um, we would actually have to sit down and talk a little bit more in depth to see exactly what strategy you want to pursue um, to, to go ahead and look at uh, which which pieces are your best and slot pieces. Uh, the the um, I sells um, sells five uh, thirty five trinkets that you can buy with Thomas Isle pieces. Um, but the other thing is is that uh, one of the things uh, Izzy and I were talking about prior to this presentation was um, you know obviously with the with the pieces you may want to buy some burdens of attorney so you have a handful of them. And then you keep looking for multiple pieces, multiple neck pieces, uh, because you know you just sort of get a, a randomized roll for the neck piece, and so you may not get a piece that's really truly um, the piece you want. Um, 
And so you might want to go ahead and keep trying to get that optimal neck piece um, with those birds or trains, but that's one thing you could do with them. So it's, it's a good idea to have some of those on hand. It is, it is a good idea to have the burdens on hand, but you could also just leave them, leave them, leave the time and style coins. I mean, they're not going to go anywhere. They're, you know, you're not, it doesn't seem like you've hit a cap with them yet. Um, so you would have to report back to us to say, oh, look, my, my time and style coins are frozen. <laughs> is there a cap on Yeah. Them? And the only thing with, if I can just come in real quick, I see here with the, the coins, is depending on if you're going for the cloak or not and how far along the path you are towards that. I believe there is a quest um, that's related to that and it requires you to have 50,000 timeless coins. Um, basically it says collect 50,000 coins right, to, to satisfy that quest. So depending where you are along that path you may want to make sure that you have 50,000 on hand when you're close to uh, getting that quest. Okay. Well, yeah, right I think now, I think you got that covered. <laughs> yeah, I I've got a hundred fifty three thousand right now. So you can certainly buy mm -hmm. Burns of Eternity for fifty thousand if yeah, if I you're can, not getting the drops. I can buy a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, exactly, and those are some things that you can you can look at, and 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 that's really sort of one of the reasons why we wanted to do uh, the 550 challenge is to generate discussions like this, so that way uh, everyone can go ahead and, and and have discussions about what they what they want to do with their coins and what their strategies are. And and what Chris was talking about was something that that I've just recently been doing on a new mage I made. I did have lots and lots of cloth pieces, and I just kept re-rolling them until until I got the best of slots. And and I did go just like Rebecca. I went to Mr. Robot. I and I gave it a try and and kept looking. And and you know if you're running around there enough, you're going to get more than one headpiece. So, so I mean, it, it really is kind of luck of the draw when it comes to stuff like that. And and for you, I mean, you can you can roll the stuff and then just wait and, and use your burdens of eternity then. Okay. I was just converting a lot of the mail and stuff that mm -hmm. I would get that my character could use, and then selling it. Just oh, yeah, to, to vend it. The, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to increase the value of it. I had not thought about um, changing my aspect or changing my spec and then mm -hmm. converting it to convert it for um, a different spec. Well, exactly, and that's the nice thing about it is is that those Thomas tokens you can use them for a lot of different things, and uh, you know, just just either you're using it for your off spec or if you're using it, um, you know, and that's the piece. And the thing is, is that it's really just sort of looking at it and seeing different ways you can use everything. Um, you know, you're very normally you're always in one spec, but it's always nice to be able to switch off two different specs um, uh, if you, if you want to. So, uh, like I said, my 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 ideas would be basically you know hold on to your time and style coins until you notice you're, they're no longer going up anymore. Because um, I don't think necessarily that you're you're in any 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 way shape or form you know too worried about uh, hitting the cap. I don't know that there is a cap on them. Um, but uh, then basically as you get the neck pieces then just buy the burden attorneys as you need them and uh, go ahead and, and, and convert the neck piece to see um, where it's at and if you use Ask Mr. Robot um, you know to sort of get an idea, get a feel for what they're trying to, to say is uh, is your best in slot piece um, one of the things they're looking at, I'm just looking at it right now Is um, my stuff in Mr. Robot? Yeah, no, I, I promise I won't <laughs> click optimize. Otherwise, we'll all scream in horror. Uh, no, I <laughs> think you do a good job at it. So, uh, so basic Gale Burst is the one that uh, is the is the type of timeless aisle piece that's saying uh, is best is best for hunters. Is uh, the of the Gale Burst is the one you're looking for. That's your best in slot. Your next best one. Let's see. It would be storm blast of the storm blast. So those are the two shoulders that you're looking for, um, or I should say that would be the, the that's just on your shoulders, but on your neck piece that you're looking for, um, you would be looking for the, of the gale burst or of the storm of the storm blast would be the neck type type of neck piece you're looking for. 
And actually what's interesting is uh, it looks like Immersius drops um, your your best in slot uh, 40 man. Actually, a flex, flex version uh, neck piece. From flex, and you could also get some other pieces. So, okay, let's go in and let's make some adjustments here, real quick. So, yeah, actually, it's saying that uh, Immersius is uh, the neck piece that drops from Immersius is your best in slot. Um, for flex, and I haven't experimented much with the flex. Can you can mm -hmm. get into those anytime? It doesn't have to be just ra just um, guild. Uh, yeah, you can actually uh, put in for that. The, the looking, the looking for rate. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a piece there uh, under the rate icon that allows you to to select yourself for that. I haven't used it a lot, but uh, actually, I think if you talk with uh, if we talk with Jacori, I think Jacori has used it a couple times, so she can probably give you a little bit more um, feedback about what's there. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, like I said, I'm, you know, doing the flex runs, and Mercy's drops some pieces. Uh, also, looking at just the conversion, um, you know, they actually say that according to the Asmus Robots um, calculations, your um, using the Thomas Isle on your neck piece actually is a uh, a bigger up a, a bigger um, a more beneficial piece than actually the Immersius piece is. Um, so if you, get, if you if you can get the of the storm blaster of the gale burst. Okay. So um, so those are some pieces there. So it looks like you can actually get several pieces that would be considered um, higher value than than the, even the flex rate piece, even though it's lower, even though they're they're a little bit lower item level. So of the so first priority would be gale burst, then storm blast. It looks like unerring is another one, and it looks like a droit uh, would be the uh, the fourth piece. So there's actually four four of the timeless isle tokens that uh, would would actually be a, a higher um, you know rating than that um, immersius neck piece. Okay. Based on their their review. So, but yeah, no, that's it. That's that's just sort of one of the things we're talking about is just trying to figure out what what works best for you, and that's that's just something that getting a feel for it, what you're looking at, and then talking to some of the other hunters in our guild and trying to figure out what what build works best for you and to get you where you want to be. Okay. Well, I'm I'm never gonna be better than Izzy. <laughs> okay. It's just not gonna happen. Well, actually, it's it's, it's very interesting. Uh, but if you go to, uh, we're all using Asmus Robot to, to optimize the gear. Uh, it is, is actually very interesting to me, I think very curious, that you and I are both hunters, and I think you're Beast Mastery, and now I've actually gone back to being Beast Mastery. Um, but the best in slot choices, what I'm seeing, are different for us. Because from what Chris is saying, I have a different neck piece than what it says for you. So for me, it's the Wind Fury. Um, so I don't know what the different nuances are that are making things slightly different. And I've actually done this with Dorisano on my Death Knight and her Death Knight. And even though we're both in Frost Spec, uh, the best in slot weapon for us are different. So I think when you're doing this, I don't know exactly what the algorithm Mr. Robot is using, but I have seen differences between best in slot choices for the same class mm -hmm. and the same spec. So that's something that I, I really want to look into. And it may be because of some piece that you already have, then it mm -hmm. actually switch out, you know, another slot for something else. Uh, and and so when in talking with Orsana. Uh, when I suggested one weapon, and one, then I go back and look, and it's another weapon. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking it's just basically what you have already that might be a higher level than the normal, so it switches out one of the lower slots just to make sure that the stats balance out properly. It's a little bit like what I think uh, Rebecca was saying earlier, um, just to balance the, the, the stats. Yeah. Uh, because you can't have too much of something. I, I agree. And, and not put into something else. It, it does seem to be adaptive in that it does look exactly at what you have. 
Because um, one of the things is is that uh, if you click on here and click on Gear Optimizer, um, one of the things you can do is you can actually look at generic characters here, and then you just pick a you pick a Death Knight. So for instance, if you were just starting out and you were just trying to figure out what what it says specifically for a, a generic character other than your own, you would just pick your spec. You'd pick your your um, class or spec. Click load, and you click the general, the gener generic characters, and then it'll say this is what the best in slot is for uh, a generic blood knight, and then what ha a blood death knight, and then what happens is that um, you would go ahead and you would. Um, it does make considerations for what you already have. So, all right, guys, I, I think that is. Oh no, go ahead. Do you have to be um, item level five thirty to finish like the siege of Og Ogremar ones, or? Uh, you need just need to be uh, five. Uh, just need to be four ninety six to get into all the Siege of Ogremars. So okay. um, once you, you're you're obviously past that level, but once you hit that level, you can do all of the Siege of Ogremars as long as you're completing. You uh, basically what it works now is that if you you have to kill every boss. Um, so you know how sometimes you get into LFR and you're in the you you're end the up in, in the middle or the last boss. Um, if you kill the boss, you'll get the valor points for the last boss. Um, and you'll get the you'll get the achieve that says you you cleared that dungeon, but the looking for raid will not let you move forward to the next um, the next piece until you've gone back and killed all the bosses. Okay. And you've been in on a successful kill for all the bosses, and then after that, then you'll be able to get into gates. Once you clear all the bosses and gates, then you're able to get into underhold, and once you're done with underhold, then it gets you into um, the last the last one. So. Okay, so um, I finally finished the first scene yep. the other the other day. Cool, and I know there's a bunch of us. There's a there's a big group that's running around. So um, you know, feel free to ask around, and it's always more fun to run with the, with the, with groups, um, and uh, it makes the LFR a bit more enjoyable. Uh, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, there's always going to be a lot of us doing some stuff because uh, uh, several of us are are committed to trying to go ahead and get those cloaks. So that'll be another piece. So. Um, Yep, there's always opportunities for us to collaborate. All right. Well, I'm going to try and be a little more diligent. Oh no, that's that's okay. So like I said, like I said, feel free to ask us questions. We're always we're always on, and so we're more than happy to help you out. And uh, um, you know, and if you have questions or you need help on anything, let us know, and uh, we'll try to get you a belt uh, sometime soon. So it might take us a month because we might have to build from scratch, but uh, uh, we'll get you that belt. I've been trying to skin with my Death Knight to oh yeah <laughs> leather. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's uh, one of the things. If you have a leather worker crafter, it's a daily it's a daily thing, and then uh, it just takes a bit um, to go through it. You need magnificent hides, is what you consume to make the new the new version of magnificent hides. Right. And uh, you need twenty eight. You need twenty one of those for a belt. So the fastest once so anyone can, if they have no, if they have none of it started, the fastest they can get you a belt is three weeks. But uh, it's a really quick turnaround. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Be oh, before we we leave, Chris, I'd like to sure. just make one little comment. Going back a little bit to the discussion about what to do with your timeless coins, and uh, and the strategies of possibly purchasing them for fifty thousand times uh, burdens for fifty thousand coins. Now, this is, this can be a sort of math exercise if you want to make it such. There is this cave over here with all the chests. That you can actually purchase keys to the chest for five uh, hundred uh, Talmus coin per key, mm -hmm. and is Kukuru's Grotto on Talmus Owl. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at my screen and it was sharing properly, you'll see the cave and fellow vendor here, Master Kukuru. Yeah, oh, I have that. a friend that just visited me. <laughs> He's like, tag, you're it. Yep, and then he runs away. But you see all the chests that are around here. You can purchase the key for 500 coins, and you have a chance of picking up gear of all sorts, or timeless coins, or burden of eternity. So if you think about it, you ha you can actually spend 500 coins and get one burden, as opposed to 50,000 coins. But then you're also playing the game of chance. It's the right. casino. It's the in-game yes, casino. Yes, it's the casino. <laughs> but anyway, now... Some I've I've actually had very little luck as far as getting burns from these. I've gotten a lot of gear, um, but there's another guildy that actually said that uh, doesn't bother buying them for fifty thousand because he's had enough 
uh, luck with these to get action burns from doing this. Mm -hmm. So sometimes come in and spend maybe 10,000 coins and get 20 keys uh, and just go through them and hold them all. Uh, sort of thing and, and increase your chance that way. But then again, it's pure random, so you don't know something. Yeah, I think, get I think nothing. Yeah, I think Blizzard, I think Blizz is playing around with the random number drop, the percentage drop, because I know that initially they had it was actually higher, and then they even wrote about it. Initially, it was much higher the first couple days of the of five four, and then all of a sudden um, they dropped it. They dropped it down after too many people were getting too many burdens. So uh, it's, it's interesting. It's it's basically the casino. So uh, you know, it, depending on what your risk preference is, uh, whether you like to keep your coins and, and just buy them flat out, or if you want to go ahead and and try your luck on that. But that also might be a, a way to look at spending some of your coins. Yeah, to see if you can find that. Yeah, it's 500 chests, so you can buy keys. Uh, I don't know, Izzy, if you want to go ahead and talk to talk to him, sure. so I see I can see. Um, so basically, whenever you 106 keys. <laughs> I don't know if you want to buy all of it, but <laughs> so for example, I can talk to him, browse is good, and here are the keys, and I'll just buy two for now, right? Because I actually don't have one open slot in my bags, so I'll come over to a chest and click on it, open, and I got 250 coins out of that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then another 350 coins. So I basically got enough to buy another coin. I mean, another key. So that's how you can also do it. Because if sometime I'll come in here just out of the blue because I have so many timeless coins. I'll just spend 10,000 and buy 20 keys. And I'll keep track of how many timeless coins I'm getting back. And then based on that, I go back and buy just you know, the number of keys mm -hmm. that I can afford with the coins that I actually got back from the chest. And then if you keep going with that, you, eventually you'll do it or down where you won't have enough to buy any more keys. So that's the strategy I take. As soon as that's done, then I leave. So it's a little bit like gambling, but safe. You have a certain amount, set amount that you want to spend <laughs> only. And you're not going to go back into your pocket. Are you, are you saying always gamble with a budget? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm I'm not a gambler, so I'm only going to set a certain amount that I put down first, and then I'm only going to spend winnings after that. <laughs> so if you if you want to play the game, I that's probably like the the safest way to play, so that you don't burn through all your coins. Uh, just set a limit, and then figure out you know how much did you get back, and then how many keys can you purchase now, and just keep doing that and cascade down basically. I don't do it often, but once in a while, when I show someone the cave, then that's what I'll do and call it my limit. <laughs> okay. Yep. So there's there's a couple different ways to to, to pursue it. So uh, we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up. So thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for watching, and uh, we will see you guys in game. Bye. Bye.